Um, can you guys hear me? Hello? Okay. Uh, yeah, so Ryan is going to come a little bit late today. He's the one that usually does attendance for him, so I asked him to go ahead and make that, so I think he'll probably do that once he gets here. Um, okay. Uh, so there's five people. Uh, we'll wait a little bit longer. Um, we'll probably start it around, um, I don't know, maybe 4.53 or so, I don't know. Uh, quickly before we start, um, I just want to make sure you guys can read this. Is this a uh, okay? There we go. Is this a readable enough font? How about now, uh, JJOS32?
Okay, I think we're going to get started now. Okay, so last time we left off on the conditional statements, and uh, at the end, I think if uh, you guys remember that we went, um, uh, we briefly covered the um, precedence, the operator precedence, so I just want to quickly cover that again. Uh, so uh, it is in the, um, I did put it in the uh, text thing on the GitLab, so let me just zoom in on that. Okay. So right here, like this. Uh, can you guys see this? Um, uh, so this is the operator precedence for uh, Boolean. So first you start off with parentheses, then XOR, NOT, AND, OR. Um, so that's uh, just from last time I wanted to point that out. Okay. Uh, now, let me just quickly go ahead and pull back. Okay, so today we're gonna cover loops. Um, so in case you don't know, loops basically allow you to run your code uh, over and over again, or a segment of code, right? So um, the first one that we're gonna cover is gonna be a while loop. Um, so the reason we're going to do that is because it's very similar to the if statement, except instead of running the code once, it keeps on running it while the condition that you gave is true, which is why it's called the while loop, right? So let's write a simple example, right? So first I'm going to create a variable called i, and I'm going to set the value to 0, okay? Uh, so now i is 0, and so now I'm going to write a while loop. So while i is less than 5, right? So I'm going to have it print i, okay, so uh, it's going to print out the value of i, and I also want it to increase the value of i by 1, okay? Uh, or, so the, basically I wrote plus equals here, again, this is the same thing as i equals i plus 1, but um, just as a shorthand, we write uh, i plus equals 1, okay, so it's the same thing. Just a little shorthand that might come in handy sometimes. Uh, I think Brian actually went over it in the first lesson, I think. Uh, but anyways, so now if I run this, right, uh, I just want you to think for a second, what do you think is going to happen, right? Uh, you guys can try and uh, guess in the, in the uh, chat. Well, I mean, if you're, like, new to programming, as otherwise I'm sure you probably know. Anybody? Okay, so basically, uh, okay, let's run it. So, okay, it printed the numbers from uh, zero to four, right? And so, um, why did this happen? So, uh, we started i at zero, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, it's gonna run five times, uh, which is why we get from zero to four, it's five numbers. So, uh, <laughs> so we start i at zero, and so our condition is i less than zero, right? Now, if we were evaluating this as an if statement, right, we would say, uh, um, we would check is uh, i less than 5, so 0 is less than 5, yes, so uh, 0 is less than 5, so it's going to run, and it's going to print out i, and it's going to increase the value of i by 1, right, so the first time it's going to turn into a 1, uh, then it's going to, right, so we get first, we print out the 0, then we print out the 1, right, because it's the second value that we're going to get. Then we keep doing that until i equals 5, right, because if i equals 5, that means that uh, i is not less than 5, right, so that means that this becomes false, so that means it's going to stop running this code. So you can see right here, um, after 4, it's going to stop. Okay, so that's basically how a while loop works, right, so you can put any condition in here, right? So uh, we can put in like, I don't know. Um, so, okay, we can put in while 
Um, we can put in while. Uh, let's just say we want to do uh, the. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, um, say we have an array, right? So we'll say a equals, and it's going to be an array, and it's going to have uh, maybe a few names, right? So uh, uh, I'll just put in uh, Jimmy, Timmy, and we'll put Bob or something, right? Okay. So a has those values. So now uh, we can do, uh, again, we're going to set i equals to 0. Then we'll say while i less than, uh, so we know that there's three elements in here, right? Uh, one, two, three, right? Um, but we want to go, so the indexes are from 0, 1, and 2, right? So we would want to stop at 2, so that means i less than 3, right? Uh, so then we'll say uh, print a of i, right? So the ith element of the array, right? Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and increment uh, increment uh, i by 1, right? So there we go. Now it's going to print out all of the names. OK, uh, so that runs the code um, as long as the condition is true, right? So another thing that we can do with this is we can uh, run it, run something for infinite amount of times, right? So we can say while true, right? And that means that it's going to run forever. Um, and so you want to make sure that this doesn't happen because um, if it runs forever, then you know obviously your code doesn't stop and it might crash the program or something, right? Or you know it, it could cause a problem. So uh, uh, so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make like a a little game, right? So we're gonna say uh, while true, well not a game, but like it's gonna be so input validation, right? So we want to make sure that whatever the guy inputs is is correct or, or makes sense. So a die has. Um, has six faces, right? So there's six possible values, uh, from well, from one to six, right? So we want to make sure that uh, so we'll convert it the input into an integer, right? So we're gonna ask the person uh, what did you roll, right? So they're gonna input some value, but the thing is they could input any value, right? And as long as it's an integer, like if it's not an integer, it's not a, a number that could be converted into an integer. It's just gonna crash and it's gonna create an error. But um, as, let's assume that they are going to type in some number. But at the same time, we have to make sure that the number is between 1 and 6, right? Because um, uh, dies only go from 1 to 6. So then we'll say uh, if, uh, so we'll use the, remember when we chain together these statements, so die value less than or equal to 6, right? So basically what this means is if the die value is between 1 and 6 inclusive, right, then we're going to run this. So what we're going to run here is something called a break, right? So a break, basically what that does, so remember I said that uh, this loop will run forever, right? And we don't want the loop to run forever because, you know, that would crash the program. So the break will break out of the, pro uh, out of the loop, right, the furthest out loop. So in this case, that's going to be this loop right here. So it's going to break out of there. So if we run this, right, so if I say, what did you roll? I'll put in like 9 or something. So 9 is not a value that you'd be able to roll. And if I output anything outside of that range, then it doesn't work, right? But if I, uh, like 7 wouldn't work. But if I input something that is within the range, like 4, right? 4 does work, and it just breaks out the loop. We could store it into a variable, or, uh, well, I guess we don't really need to store it into a variable because it's already stored in die value, so it's going to be 4, right? Um, so yeah, that, that's how you can uh, validate input. That's how you would use uh, infinite while loop, right? Uh, OK, so now we can uh, build a basic uh, guessing game, right? So uh, we're going to say uh, guess equals 0, right? So um, we're going to say while the guess is not equal to 3, right? Uh, then we're going to ask them. Uh, what the guess is, right? So int input. OK, so guess a number between 1 and 10. OK. 
So basically, this will ask the person to guess a number between 1 and 10, right? Uh, and so it's going to keep on going, right? So it's going to keep on going, and it's going to keep asking them until they guess 3, basically, right? Because uh, if they guess 3, then 3 is not not equal to 3, so 3 is equal to 3. That means it's going to break out of the loop, right? So it's not going to run this code anymore. Uh, so then we can say uh, print. Uh, uh, you can say that you print uh, guess the right number, right? So right, okay. So now whenever we run this, right? So if I run anything uh, outside of this value, it's not going to work. But as soon as I hit three, right, uh, I guess the right number. Uh, and we could again do this to where uh, we have to make sure that the that the value is indeed between 1 and 10, right? Because we're just kind of assuming that the guy will input something between 1 and 10, but we don't know that for sure. So you could also implement something like that. In fact, actually, um, uh, you should probably try and do that on your own um, if you want. So, OK. I showed you earlier how we can uh, go through an array using a while loop like this, right? But the thing is, that's not typically how you'd want to do it, because there's a better way to do it in Python, right? So I'm gonna uh, create um, I'm gonna create this array right here, right? Um, so give me a second. So, okay, there we go. I'm just gonna create that array, right? Nums, and it has a bunch of uh, random numbers in it, right? So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, print uh, all the numbers the way that you would. Uh, typically do it in Python, right? So it's kind of like English, right? So for num in nums, right? So for every number inside of nums, and this can be any variable, I just chose num, right? So I could do like a, uh, uh, n, or whatever you want, right? Uh, so for num in nums, right? I'm gonna run, so for every number in this uh, array, I'm gonna run this, the next code, right? So uh, I'm gonna say, just say print, num right so that will go what this will do is num will be assigned for uh, each iteration of the loop it'll be assigned uh, the values in this array and that will be stored inside of num right uh, and then I'm gonna print out the value num so when I run that it prints out all of the values in the array right okay so uh, that's how you would parse an array. Now, uh, also for loops, so typically while loops, uh, you use them whenever you have a condition, right? And you want to run it while the condition is true, which is, you know, that's the way that it's designed. But for loops, if you have a set number of times that you want to run it, or you want to uh, go through some iterable, you're going to parse an iterable like, a, like an array, right? Like a list that we just did, um, then, then you use the, the for loop, right? So, uh, I just showed you how you can um, parse through an iterable. In this case, we went over the list, but you could do that with any iterable, right? Like a dictionary, a set, whatever, right? Well, I don't think you can actually do a set, um, but uh, yeah, you can do a set, but you can do the list, the dictionary, all the uh, ones that have subscriptable values. But um, okay, so this is how you do it to where if you want to have a set number of times, so if you want to run the loop specifically five times or something, right? Uh, so this is how you do that. So 4x in range 5, right? So range is a built-in Python function. Um, it's something called a generator. That means that it's going to, um, for every, so you use it in a loop, right, typically. Uh, so every time it'll generate a new value, which is why it's called a generator. Uh, and so it, in this case, we're going to go to 5, right? So it's going to start, it, uh, if you don't give it any other arguments, it'll always start at 0 and it'll go to this number minus one, right? So that's gonna be five total uh, iterations. So it's gonna print zero to four, just like we did before. So if I print x, right? It, you'll see it goes back at, at zero to four. So this is equivalent to what we did earlier, but it's just that, you know, this this looks nicer than just uh, than doing uh, this, right? Um, I mean, and that took like four lines, this took two, right? So uh, that's how you do that. Uh, like if you wanna just run it, a specific number of times but sometimes you might want to run uh, more complicated tasks so uh, let's just say 4x in range right so uh, if I want to run all the numbers from let's just say 
two to, if I want to go from two to six, for example, right? So what I'll do is I'll put two right here, that's the starting, and then I'll do a comma, and I said two to six, right? So I'm gonna put a seven right here. So it's gonna go, so the first value is included and the last value is not included, right? So it's uh, from two inclusive to seven exclusive, right? So um, it looks like Ryan is here now, so he will post the attendance uh, soon, so I'll check in for that. Um, okay, so what this will do is it's gonna run, uh, iterate all the values from two to six for x, right? Um, Okay, so it's going to run all the values from 2 to 6, right? So let's go ahead and just, uh, sorry about that. Okay, let's go ahead and print this. So uh, print the x, right? So, okay. So yeah, you'll see it prints from 2 to 6, right? Uh, and then also, so that's, you can do a start and an end value, but you can also do a, um, you can also have a step, right? So what does that mean? So like basically you're counting by that. So like if I tell you to, uh, if I want a program that counts by twos from uh, zero to 15 or something, right? So I would say zero to 16, right? And I want to step by two, okay? So there you go. Now it counts from zero to 15 by twos. It's not, of course, it's not gonna get to 15, but, uh, and actually if I put, 15 in here, it would, that would also do the same thing, right? Um, so, okay, yeah, that's that. And then, so like uh, the example I put in here, so like you wanna print all odd numbers between five and 21 inclusive, right? So five and 21 inclusive, right? So I'm gonna have to actually do from five to 22, right? Because 21 won't be counted. Uh, also, Ryan just posted the attendance, so go ahead and um, fill that out. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go from five to twenty-two, um, but it's not gonna actually hit twenty-two, right? Because it's gonna stop at twenty-one, and then twenty-one once it increments two, it'll go to twenty-three, and twenty-three is greater than twenty-two, so it's not actually gonna run that time. So if I run this, there you go. You get uh, all the odd numbers between. 5 and 21 inclusive, right? Okay. So now, uh, earlier I showed um, how you can uh, parse through lists, right? Like um, like this, basically, right? For, int, uh, for num in nums, right? Um, so that's, you can um, parse through uh, arrays like that, but um, you can also generate arrays with loops, right? So here's how, uh, with what we know so far, here's how we would do it, right? So we would first start off, let's just say we wanna create an array A, right? So we would start it off as an empty list, right? Um, uh, yes, so yeah, that's, that's it's the same. For if, from Java, that's the same thing. It's just that in Python, all of the for loops are gonna be for each loops. So we we'll, also have that in, in Java, you have the for each, which uh, basically is the same thing for uh, iterables. But in this case, uh, we still have a for each, right? You still have for x in uh, range, but the range function just basically generates those uh, values. So it's basically doing exactly what the uh, Java loop is doing, except uh, it's doing for each uh, instead. So basically this x is the equivalent of the i and uh, it's basically, this one is gonna generate a value each time and it's gonna assign it to the x. Uh, so that's what's happening here. Um, okay, so now uh, if I wanna get um, all multiples of two uh, from zero to 20, right? Uh, and I wanna fill this list with that, right? So I wanna fill a from zero to 20 counting by twos, right? So how would I do that? I would say four x in range from zero to 21 and we're counting by twos, right? So we're going to go from zero to 20 counting by twos, right? Um, so we're going to say a dot append. So this is a function that allows you to add elements to the end of a list, right? Um, so a is our list, so we're going to append to the uh, list a. So we're going to add x to that, okay? And if I print out a right now, you'll see that it counts from zero to 20 counting by twos, right? Okay. So you see that took three lines basically, right? 
uh, that's too long, right? <laughs> we want to do it in one line. So here's how you can, uh, this is a pretty cool feature of Python. Uh, you can directly just uh, run it like this, right? So you can say um, for, so x for x in range from 0 to 21 uh, counting by twos, right? So this basically does the exact same thing, right? Uh, except it's all done within one line. Uh, it's no more efficient in terms of computation, but um, it is, you know, it uh, takes up less lines, basically. Uh, so uh, this is the same thing, right? So we're going to put, this is where what the actual element that's going to be added to the um, array is, right? So we're going to put x, right? Uh, and then this part, right, um, this part right here, this is all still the same um, the same thing from the uh, previous previous loop right here, right? That's the same thing. So if I run this, right, you see a still has the same value because um, that does the exact same thing. Okay. So uh, and then you can also uh, add a um, conditional on top of this, right? So uh, we'll say b equals x for uh, x in a, right? So what is this going to do? It's going to parse, x is going to parse through all of the values of a, right? So the these 0 to 20 counting by 2s. But we what we're going to do in this case is for b, it's only going to be the values between here and here that are divisible by 3, right? So uh, how do we check if it's divisible by 3? We can just say if uh, x um, mod 3 equals 0, right? So what this will do is it'll go through every value in A, and if the x mod 3 equals 0, then that value, this x, will be added to B. Otherwise, it won't, right? So it's going to, so B will now contain all of the values divisible by 3 in this array, right? And so you can see that, that that's correct, right? So 0 is divisible by 3, technically. Uh, 6 is, 12 is and 18 is, right? So, OK. Uh, that's how you can, that's basically list comprehension, how you can generate that. Um, and then you can also go ahead and do that with strings. So what I have in this example is uh, for, so cakes, uh, we'll say, uh, we'll put a, sh we'll convert it to a string, right? Uh, X will be converted into a string, and we're going to put another string, and we're going to add it. So basically, um, what I'm trying to show here is that you can, um, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything, but uh, basically I was, I was just trying to say, show that you can actually add stuff in here as well. So you can like apply functions to it, you can add stuff to it uh, in this part of the list comprehension. Um, so you can, um, you can convert, so in this case we're going to take all the values in A, right, right here, and we're going to convert it into a string, right? That way we can concatenate it to this other string. And then basically this is a list of strings um, that has these values. So zero cakes, two cakes, four cakes. Um, again, it doesn't really mean anything. It was just trying to give an example. OK, so are there any questions on this, uh, this part, the list comprehension? Does everybody understand? Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, last stream, uh, nobody could hear Ryan. Can you guys hear him right now? Really? I'm on the... That's weird. Because I'm on the actual Discord app this time.
itself is just really, really, really low. Um, let me try this. Wait, on my status, does it show that I'm streaming? Oh, that's weird. Uh, yeah, I think it's a problem on my end though. And I think that uh, if you can hear him, that's because it's uh, going through a feedback loop or something. Wait, you can hear yourself, Anish? No, I can't. Oh. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I have to fig figure that out. Um, maybe we can try testing it out after this stream. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're going to... Okay, so anything that I missed, guys? Uh, nobody. Uh, let me do that. I mean, I turned up just my system volume, so I don't know if that'll. No, 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 no. Okay, go to the thing where go to our voice chat. Or yeah, I am. Uh huh. Okay, right click on my username first. Oh, okay. I see user volume. Okay, I see. What's it at right now? Is it a hundred? It was at fifty. Uh, let me change that to a hundred. No, sorry, it is at a hundred. I made it 200. Make it 200. Make yeah. It 200. Okay. Now can you guys hear him? This one. I can. It's so weird. It's really low. I think the sound is just coming, I think it's just coming through my uh, headphones, um, that's probably why it's so low. Oh, he says that um, he can hear us, so I don't know, we'll just figure this out later. Um, let's move on with yeah, the yeah, yeah. listen, okay, so let me just clear the screen. Okay, so next concept is going to be nested loops, so um, with nested loops you want to uh, what it's gonna do is gonna run a loop and then you're gonna run a loop inside of that loop, right? So it's, uh, what we're gonna do for this one is we're gonna print a five by five square of uh, asterisks, right? So uh, this symbol right here, asterisk. Um, so uh, here's how we're gonna write it. So four X in range of five, right? So I said uh, it's gonna be a five by five square, right? So four X, in range of five, and then I'm gonna inside of the inside of this loop, I'm gonna add another loop. So for uh, y in range of five, right? Um, so for for every so for every instance iteration of this loop, it's gonna run five iterations of this loop, right? So if you you know if you multiply that's gonna be five times five, so it's gonna run twenty five times in total, right? So uh, I'm just gonna write in here uh, print the asterisk and so um, here's a thing about the um, about the print function right so you can add a comma and you can add this end equals so normally the end is gonna be a new line right so it's gonna print out a new line every time and I think if you go back to the um, it was either the first or the second uh, lesson uh, and you look at the text or you can watch the video uh, there's an escape character um, backslash n, that's basically what it was using. But here I'm going to change it to an empty space, so it's not going to print anything at the end of the asterisk, so it's just going to print the asterisk and nothing else, no, no new line, right? Uh, so basically from Java, uh, basically this is the equivalent of just running a regular print, and with, if I didn't include this part, that's the equivalent of a print line, right? Print a line. Okay. Uh, and then now, so what it's uh, that's going to do is for every single, right? So this is going to represent the the uh, rows, right? Um, so I need to. Uh, sorry, this is going to represent the columns, right? So I'm going to need to uh, add a add a new line after every single um, uh, to to differentiate the uh, rows, right? So I'm going to just add a blank print statement. So what this is going to do is going to basically print out that new line, right? Uh, remember this one here, we changed the end to a blank space, but normally it's a new line. So this is just going to print a regular new line, right? 
So if I run this, you can see it prints a five by five square of asterisks. Of course, it doesn't look like a square because you know the vertical space is bigger than the horizontal space, but uh, it's a square. Um, so okay, next we're gonna do. Um, so there's next we're gonna cover actually another type of uh, array. Um, so this is gonna be. Okay, this is going to be, um, yeah, I don't know who that is. Okay, I'll just block them. You know? Yeah. <laughs> just kick him. Okay. Um, anyway, so. Uh, oh, wait, they left. Okay. Um, that was weird. Okay. Yeah. This, we're going to cover 2D arrays now, right? So uh, 2D meaning that it has uh, basically two dimensions, right? So normally you just have uh, a single dimensional array with just um, some elements, right? Um, but here what we're going to do is we're going to have arrays of arrays, or, well, I keep on saying arrays, I mean lists, right? So lists of lists, okay? So um, each element of the list is going to be a list, okay? So I'll put one, two, three right here, right? And then I'll put a comma, and then I'll, oh, okay. Uh, Okay, I put one, two, three, then I'll put four, five, six, right? And then I'll put another one that's uh, seven, eight, nine, okay? So now, uh, you know, A has those values, right? Uh, and you could also imagine it like a matrix, right? Um, so here, I'll quickly just go ahead and just so you guys can visualize it. Uh, okay, so just like one, two, three. Uh, let me make that a little bit bigger. Uh, anyways, basically, it's like a matrix, right? So it's three rows and three columns, right? Because each list in here represents a row, and each of these, right? So this, these three first elements, that's a column, and these are each elements of there. So to index this, right, you basically call first, you want to index for the, for the list, right? So say I want to grab the two, right? this two right here. This is in the first uh, list of this list of lists, right? So uh, what that's gonna, so if I wanna access the two in here, that's in the first list. So to access the first list, I do zero, right? Cause this is zero, one, two. So I'm gonna access the zero. Next, I wanna access the element within this list, right? So within this first list, which is in, at index zero, I wanna access the second element. Now the second element is going to be at index one, right? So if I run this, you see that the output is two because um, the element at zero, one, right? So row zero, column one is going to be two, right? Okay. So now let's just say that you wanted to print out all of the, all of the elements of this, um, of this list, right? So what we're going to do, and we're uh, just about to, about to end, so um, I'll cover this, and then I'll, uh, if you guys have any questions, you guys can ask, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and end, it, end the stream. So for row in A, right? So for each of these rows, I want to run another loop, right? So for, then I'm going to say call for column, right, in row. So for all the columns in each of the row, right? Or I could say the individual elements, but um, anyway, so then I want to print, I want to print out A of row, right, of column. So what this will do is it'll, um, oh, sorry, no, actually, I don't need to do that. Um, this will just be call, right? And then I'll add an end, and this time, instead of making it a um, empty space, I'm just gonna put a space, that way we can differentiate it, right? I'm not gonna put a comma, because otherwise the last one would also have a comma and that wouldn't work. Um, but uh, then I'm gonna print out uh, a blank space, right? So what this will do is it's gonna print, well, pretty much what I was trying to type earlier before the thing crashed, anyways. So it's gonna be uh, the, Things spaced out, right? So here, let me just run that. There we go, like this. So it's gonna print out. So what what it did was it went through each of the rows, right? So the first row, 
and then inside of this iteration of the loop, right, the first iteration, the row is going to be this one, and then it's going to look at the column in the row, right? So the row is this one, and so for column, it's going to the first time it's going to run out, it's going to look at one, right? So call equals one for the first iteration of this loop, right? So it's going to print out one and a space, right? Right here. Then it's going to look, look at the second iteration. So it's going to go to two and it's going to print that out. Same thing for three. Then at the end of this loop, it's going to just print a, a new line, right? So then the cursor basically goes to the next line right here. Then it's going to go ahead and go to the next row, which is the second one. And it's going to repeat that same process, print a new line, third row, same thing. And uh, it still prints a new line, which is why we have this extra space right here. And at the end of each of these, there will be an extra space right there um, from the end being a space. OK, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, is there anything else that I need to cover, guys? Really, I think you got everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, uh, thank you guys for joining, and we'll see you next week. Uh, I, hopefully, Ryan will uh, do it next time. Uh, if not, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, anyways, bye.